And we got, we got some we got some stuff coming up. Um, I can't tell y'all all of them, but you know that there's some stuff coming up. Um, we, we do have our first covenant partner, person that doesn't really attend regularly. He's been here a couple times, but he he uh, hey. <laughs> he, uh, he uh, <laughs> pledged that he would do a um, hundred dollars a month to become a covenant partner of, of the church. So we have our first covenant partner. I saw that. I'm 
We've been talking about the church. Come on, let's pray real quick. Lord God, we bless you and thank you, Father God. We thank you for your tender mercies, Father God. We thank you that you have called us to this place tonight, Father God, and we may learn more of you. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for the anointing that you have placed on this house, Father God. The, 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 the journey to learn more, Father God, the journey to dig down into your word, Father God, that we should rightly divide the word of truth, that we should not be ashamed, Father God, of the things that we learn in your word, Father God, that these things that we learn that are adding unto our lives, Father. We thank you, Father God, for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the sanctification process, Father God. We thank you that we've been set apart, Father God. But we thank you more, moreover, Father God, more abundantly that you are cutting us, and that you are pruning us, and that you are shaping us into your son. And when we go to the mirror, Father God, that we see the process, Father God, that we see Christ in our lives, Father God, that we walk as new creatures, Father God, that we lay hold of the new life that we live, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we bless you this evening, Father God, but we know that the Holy Spirit is definitely welcome in this place. The Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach this to your people, Father God. Teach your people that they may draw out, that you may draw out questions from them like water from a well, Father God. Dig down deep into the reservoirs of their spirit, Father God, and pull out the deep questions, Father God. Pull out the mysteries, Father God. Pull out new faith, Father, in the name of Jesus. Pull out, Father God, new joy and new love. Pull out the fresh wine of the Spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you, Father God, for cutting us, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for taking us to squares, to circles, that we fit right into the peg of the kingdom of God, that we have not drawn back, Father God, that we have continued pressing on towards the mark. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, teach me tonight as I teach others, Father God. Rest on my shoulders, Father. Let no hindering spirit be able to dwell in this place, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your anointing is in this place. Your anointed people of God are in this place, Father God. The people who bear the blood of Christ on their foreheads, Father, in the name of Jesus. Satan, you must flee right now. Come on in, God. Satan, you must flee. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for patience and temperance and all suffering, Father God. We thank you for the blood of the cross. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit, Father God. Acts chapter 2. So we've been talking about the cross. We've been talk, I mean, the church. We've been talking about the church. And uh, can I get a Bible up? Somebody give me a Bible real quick. I'm about to stuff over. Acts chapter 2. I ate, I ate Acts chapter 2 out of my Bible, so when we flip So last, so two weeks ago we talked about the believer to be presented to God in hope, hope laid up in heaven, hope as the ultimate salvation, hope as the glory of God, hope as the assurance of salvation. We're going to start with hope being in eternal life. So, Acts chapter 2, verse 24. So when God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should behold them, that Christ, that Christ was raised up from death, that Christ was raised from the grave, because that death could not hold him there, right? It says, For David speaking concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he was on he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. David, David had David had knowledge a Messiah coming, and he always looked forward to that day that he would see Christ. Even though he never had a chance to see Christ, he always looked forward to the opportunity. So his faith rests in Christ, and he always, he said, I had Christ always on my mind. He was always on my face. He was always before my face, and that he was always on my right hand. 
He knew that Christ existed outside of just kingship as a man. He understood that Christ was to come and that he was to dwell on earth. He understood that he was more than just what the regular Jew was looking for. The regular Jew was just looking for this king to come. But he knew that this God, this God that was coming was going to be Lord, that he was going to be Savior, that salvation rested in him. See, see, you can search scripture, and you can search the scriptures and see how in, in Isaiah that he was promised, and that he was promised to be more than just a king, right? But if you take your own individual lives and you can dig down into the word and really make apply this word, or you can be a person who skims over the word and really not lay hold of it. And David laid hold of the fact that, that, that the, the, the Messiah was more than the son Messiah, that he was the Christ, that he was the anointed one, that he was proceeding from God, right? But then you have this next verse. It said, For David spake concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my, moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. What's hope mean? What's hope mean? Go look. <laughs> What's hope mean? Something to look for. Everybody chat for the team. To hold on to, for, well, for me, hope is something that I hold on to, that knowing that it's going to be better. Okay. Okay. So what's hope to you personally? What's hope to you personally? Not not just what I told you, but personally. Okay, to believe better things are to come, right? Anybody else? Hope is trust in me. Hope is trust in God. Okay. Trust in what? Trust in that everything's going to be all right in spite of what it looks like. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hope is trust that everything's going to be all right. In spite of what it looks like. In spite of what it looks like. So, so let me ask you a question. Hold on, Dave. So let me ask you a question. If this is if this is the now moment, this part right here is the now moment, and this moment is off, and it's not going in your favor. You're looking at this moment. You're saying, okay, everything's going to be all right. You look past the moment. I look past the moment. You look past the moment. Okay. Anybody else? And look at this, man. Just look around at each other, man. That you, that you, that you are here on a Tuesday. Learn about God. Learn about God. That's that's awesome to me. My hope. When I didn't see any of you, when I was home, constantly posting on Facebook, building websites, praying, studying for this time. This was hope to me. And I was looking forward to seeing people that I knew and seeing people I don't know. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this is hope to me. This is, this is hope manifested. This is hope manifested to me. Can I read something to you real quick? 2005. Did I pray? Yes. Yeah. In 2005, I had been in church a year. I had been in church a year. I went to the garage and I found all my old notebooks. <laughs> One of my friends was in jail, and I wrote him a letter, and I never mailed it to him. Today I read it, right? I said, Cousin, what's the deal? I said, I'm on my way to D.C. to church. It's about 10 a.m. Sunday morning. Yeah, I'm still doing the church thing, son. It's good for me. The best thing I ever did in my life is to serve God. Better than being a father or a husband. So much better than being a drug dealer, you know what I mean? I'm so much sharper, wise, blessed, and patient. Hope that starts school in January. I'm going to take sales and marketing. What Satan meant for evil, God will use for good. I have the ability to sell water to a well, you know? So sales and marketing is right up my alley. Real estate is also in my future. I don't even talk this way anymore. <laughs> this, sounds, this sounds funny to me, because I don't even talk this way anymore, right? I said I have to save up some cheddar in order to get that started, so therefore I must demonstrate patience. Patience is the key to this plan, because frustration is the lock. You know we are used to getting what we want, when we want it. I'm being humbled 
daily with my finances. I work in a warehouse for nine dollars an hour and work and work hard. But the hours six a.m. to two thirty are perfect because it enables me to go to school at night. There are plenty of jobs out here that pay much more but will block my plans. That's why I say the key is patience and the lock is frustration. As for, for the family, we are good. They are what keeps me strong. Without them, I might have slipped already, but they are my stronghold. And I is officially modeling for a model agency called Model Logic in Richmond, Virginia. She makes $90 an hour. So my baby is getting paid. Her first week is this week, and she has two jobs this week. If she is scheduled for four hours and works two hours, they still have to pay her four hours. We're going to invest our money for her, so her money makes money for her. Amaj is playing tight end in Pee Wee League football. He turns 10 on November 3rd. 10 years because I'm already huh? I said, China still lives with my mom. I want her with me, but we just don't have the room for her in our little apartment. Tyree is playing high school football, but broke his finger and has to sit out for the rest of the season. Teresa is good, but still goes through mood swings a lot. But I'm learning that things are <laughs> <laughs> I was in the store this morning and one of the ladies from church said to have to do something to make your wife happy. I said, I don't have to make I don't have to make her happy. That's God's job. I'm not her God, I'm her husband. If I base my if I base my life on her happiness, it will destroy me. Hey yo, I got on a three-piece suit, dress shirt, and some slick blue square toe shoes. <laughs> Oh, suit suit on. I had about one of them 10 button suits. Check it with Wiggy. So I love to dress like this. I know you've been telling me that for years. I had to get there. I just wanted to, to thug it out. You know, cuz I live in a little apartment with little money, no gear, no car, no license, and love it. Because I know Jesus will lift me out of this. God didn't give me this sharp mind to waste it. God will give me the desires of my heart. I cast my cares on Jesus. So take care of me. I just have to be patient. Amen. I send you blessings, my brother. Love you, Jamal. That's hope. Oh, yes. Got a five-bedroom house. I got two cars. I bought five, six cars in the last few years. In the last five years. I'm not boasting, but in the last five years, I know I've made over five hundred thousand dollars. I went from $9 an hour, I went from tithing, I went from hope, I went from trusting God, I went from looking from where I was, looking forward to that apartment we had, I remember roaches crawling on my chest. I never lived with bugs, but because we, because of the money issue, I had to live where I had to live. Right, right, right. That's hope. Mm -hmm. That's hope. That's the big, that, that was about nine months after I started walking with Christ. So what I want you to know is, wherever you are right now, Man, God pulled that out of the garage right in time. Right yeah, garage. So hopefully you know what I mean? There's nine people in my house. There's enough room for everybody. Amen. Everybody's got their own bedroom. And, it, and this is not a boast because, because believe me, maintaining the house is tough. Mm -hmm. You can't slip. That's right. You gotta stay focused I mean. maintaining the things that you acquire. But what I'm telling you is, is that it changes. It changes, but you have to chase to change. You have to be diligent about the things of God. You can't get frustrated with where your life is right now. Right. You have to seek first the kingdom of God, and then all those things will be added unto you. All of them. In the meantime, there's storms. In the meantime, things go haywire. In the meantime, the people that are in your life go crazy, right? But you have to stay focused on God. You can't look at the moment. You got to look past the moment. Okay? Eternal life. Hope for eternal life. Turn to uh, Titus chapter 1. Titus 5. Chapter 1. I read that. I said, man, I don't even talk like that anymore. <laughs>
and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and, uh, and an acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Keep going. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Keep going. But having due times manifested his word with preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Okay, so it says, Paul, a servant of God. Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of truth, which is after godliness. You can, you can acknowledge truth and not have godliness in your life. So what Paul's saying is that these two things, acknowledging the truth, the fruit should be, after you acknowledge the truth, is that there's fruit. And the fruit of, of acknowledging the truth is godliness. Mm -hmm. It's godliness. It's faith. And it's patience. And it's love. And it's joy. And it's all suffering. It's all these things. This is what produce, is produced by acknowledging that Jesus Christ is Lord. Once you, because, because intellectual faith is not saving faith. Just, just, just for somebody to say, yeah, I believe in God, right? I believe in God. I know God's real, right? But, but never accept Christ as Lord and Savior. That's just intellectual faith. That's just intellectual faith. So, so once you understand that Christ is real, there must be something emotional that happens. There must be some emotional faith that is attached to the intellectual faith, to the intellectual knowledge that Christ is Lord. Now you must move. You must move into accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. And that's when I tell you all the time that he puts the training wheels on, right? He runs beside you. He walks with you. He lives with you. He, he teaches you. It feels like he's always handing you candy. You're always happy. The trials haven't started yet. And even through the trials, you are able to, to, to stay focused and be happy. But then the next stage is volitional faith. And this is when he, he let, takes the training wheels on and he lets you wander a little bit because you grow up, because you grow up. And once you grow up, you have to realize and remember that you remember that in the beginning that intellectual faith that God was real, that Christ was real. So volitional faith, now you feel like you're out in the middle of the woods and there's nobody there. This is when the fruit has to be produced. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, I just have a question about, because I know we reflected a little bit, we, we talked about that a little bit, Asked about um, what was the first word you say? First was intellectual faith. Mm -hmm. Why is it so hard for people to get out of that stage? Like, Flesh. Like, 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 for instance, my, my parents, like, I ain't trying to put them on blast like that, but they, they grew up in the church. We discussed that a little bit. You know, my grandmother, real faithful, my grandfather, my, uh, my mom's mom. I never met my other grandfather, but it's just amazing how much stuff they've been through. You know what I'm saying? And it's still... Well, well that's a twofold to me, I think. Um, um, I mean, why sometimes, so have that? Sometimes when, we, when, yeah. when church has become, when church becomes religious, right. and it's binding, yeah. that's when, um, when, when the grace of God is not exhibited right. in yeah. the church. Right. For example, for example, let me give you a prime example. I said, no one who misses any class in the, in the partnership class will not be able to continue. And the only reason why I said that, and don't take advantage of this is what I'm about to tell you, but the only reason why I said that is so you would be dedicated to it. But when people miss, they said, I missed, I just tell them, okay, here's chapter two, come on back. That's grace. That's just, that's just a small exhibit of grace. But I could have been religious and said, no, hard nose. And I told you, right? And that's what church has been traditionally. And it has not exhibited the love of God. It has not exhibited the grace of Christ. Right. It has not exhibited the, the, the um, uh, uh, communion of the Holy Spirit. And this is why, this is why I just... But the, hold on, the other fold is the flesh. There's a two-fold answer to that question. People say, and then this is when you hear, well, me and God have a special relationship. Mm -hmm. He understands me. God knows my heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, and see, your heart can be in a good place, but your but your but your walk is so far away from him. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture in the Bible that says it says Peter began to follow Christ from afar off. Mm -hmm. Right? So what happens is people begin to fall away. You gotta be 
dedicated. You got to tie yourself around him. And when life begins to change, you got to hold on to him. You see what I mean? You got to hold on to him. And what happens is, so many other things. In Mark chapter 4, remember we read that? I said the cares of the world and the lust for other things creep in and it chokes the word of God. So, so, so you've been over here in the kingdom and you tip back over into the world. And when you tip back over into the world, it's not necessarily flesh all the time. It's comfort of the place that you know all your life. You see what I'm saying? It's the comfort of just being away from the kingdom. Because, because if you don't have somebody that is able to write and divide the word of truth and teach you that, that you don't have to be perfect over here. You fit without perfection. The Holy Spirit will take you to perfection. He will take you through holiness. He will teach you and prune you and sanctify you. He will do these things. But what happens is you walk into the door and those Pharisees and those churchy people and those religious people, the first thing they tell you is, your shoes are untied. Dick your shirts on backwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to me, so, so to me, that that's that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what I think it is. It's a twofold. Some people love God, but the church, the church has been so bounding that they have this uh, aversion. They have this little thing going on inside of them that they think that because they have church hurt. And church hurt causes them to stay away. And, they, and, then, they, and then what happens is they, these people don't become disciples. They have faith, they trust God, but discipleship's not there. And because they have not been discipled, they, they, they lean on, to, on their own understanding. You see what I mean? Because, because what happens is, if I'm teaching, 
and you get distracted, you miss. And when you miss, Satan steals that. You heard it, but you wasn't focused. So when you wasn't focused, he's allowed to take that right out of your heart. And it's the seed of your heart where the word grows. It's, this is a book of seeds. It's incorruptible seed. And because it's incorruptible seed, it must be planted somewhere. So it, it can't be just planted in your mind. There has to be a, a head-heart connection. You have to fall in love with his word. And once you fall in love with his word, then it's in the seat of your heart. And then out of, the, out of your heart come the issues. So if out of your heart come the issues, then it's, being, it's able to deal with the issues of your life. You see what I'm saying? But this is the where I want to focus. And these are likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, so endure but for a time. But afterward, when affliction and persecution arise, and for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Hot and cold. Yeah. Hot and cold. Hot and cold. Check it out. Hot and cold. Because of the lack of dedication. What? From the preachers of the pastor? No, from the people. The, 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 the church is more than the, than the leadership. Yes, it is. The church is more than leadership. And Christ is coming back through the church and not the pastor. Now the pastor, the pastor and the leaders, pastor first, teachers and preachers second, leadership third. They are obligated to you. So when you assume a, when you assume a position in a church, understand that 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 these people, these people, you're obligated to serve them. Leadership is supposed to serve. Christ took the robe off and washed his disciples' feet. Mm -hmm. right? right? So what I'm trying to tell you is, if I stop seeking scripture, if I stop seeking God's face, if I get lukewarm, then that's going to drip down on you. Right. Right. If I stop diligently chasing after the things of God, and we strengthen you too. I expect you, if I start doing things wrong, please leave me. Don't stand around here and wait for me to get right. Leave me. Go somewhere and be fed. If I'm not feeding you, if I'm not chasing after God, if you're not learning, I plan on going master's, doctorate, PhD, back to getting ahead. a whole other uh, set of uh, learning all the way back through. I'm not going to stop. I'll be right. 65 going to, going to school. Because if I can learn, then I can teach. Right. You see what I'm saying? And the, and, and the more multi that I become, the better you are. Right. So, so if I stop chasing after God and try to come and do this on my own strength mm -hmm. and my own accord, please go somewhere else because I'll, I'll stagnate your walk. Mm -hmm. If I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, I'll stagnate you. So when you're teaching them, we're teaching, them up, we're teaching people out in the world. Right. So, so what happens is that you receive the word with gladness, right? right? You receive the word with gladness. Woo! -hoo. Oh yeah. But then, after affliction comes, after your flesh starts to fight your spirit, because affliction doesn't always have to come from the outside. The battle starts within. So, because the battle starts within, you have to understand that your own flesh is trying to pull you away from the kingdom. And it's filled, and, and it's afflicting your spirit, and it's offended. Okay. Okay, now, with you just saying that, now, what if it's within the church? Right. All that pain, all that Right. Pain, all right. That right. Pain, all that right. And, and that's what I'm saying. If someone, because, because I said this from day one, nobody hurts nobody in this church. Right. Nobody kicks nobody when they're down. <laughs> If you got a problem with somebody, let's go in the office and talk about it. You see what I'm saying? Let's go in the office and talk about it. Let's hash this thing out. Let's find the root of the pain. Because what happens is, because what happens is half the time, the pastor and the leaders don't know what's going on, right? It's going on in the pews, and then the person who's been, who's, who, who's not rooted, the person who's not rooted and is not able to endure the affliction, not able to do, endure the sun. It says when the sun came up, it scorched it because it had not much earth. It couldn't find the water that was down in the dirt to keep it growing. So it ran. It withered away. 
So you have to understand that when it happens, when it goes down, we have went five months almost. No strife, no grief. Yes, sir. That I know of. That I know of. <laughs> We've had our individual battles, but we have not had fighting. And we cannot let it come into this place. If, if, if someone offends you, take it to them. Don't just stand back and be hurt. Yes, sir. So I was in a place of God, how there could be quarrels and, uh, and differences. Uh, I mean, it, to me, the reason why I hadn't, hadn't gone to church up till now was because I felt that you had to be perfect to go to church. And knowing what I know now, I would have been in church. That's right. right. Um, but to have people have quarrels when you're there to learn about God, serve God, and worship God, and just be fucking. Because, because, because but, but, but what you have to understand is, is that we're people. And there's, I say it here, if there's imperfections in colleagues, if there's imperfections in pastors and preachers and leaders, then there's definitely imperfections in the pews. So what happens is people get offended. People's pride get hurt because of something that hasn't been dealt with. People have jealousy. People yes. have people have yes. people yeah. well not Didn't you listen, say that? but but that's okay. outside of Christ. Okay. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Think think about what I preach Sunday. What God has blessed cannot be cursed. Right. Any sin is a curse. Yeah. Once you step into Christ, you can't be cursed. So so therefore you're still operating under the curse. And what happens is in the world. Something has conditioned your mind. Jealousy has conditioned your mind. You don't like when somebody else is rejoicing. You don't like when something's going good for somebody else. So therefore, you side out a person. <laughs> therefore, you go out and try to um, uh, sabotage. Yes, assassinate what's going on. Yes. <laughs> My thing is, we're, we're supposed to have long suffering. Yes. So if you're not rejoicing, then you shouldn't be long suffering anyway. Now, now, long suffering, long suffering is not necessarily, it is, is, is not necessarily suffering. Long suffering has to do with, with, with going through, going through. So, so what happens is that when that person's rejoicing, even though you're not in a place that you can rejoice right now, you should rejoice with them and go through. Yes, right. Right, and go through. So, 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 so what happens is that if, if, if Stefan has a pain and, I'm, and I don't have the pain, my job is to come to him and minister to him, right? right. Not just being a preacher, but I'm talking about being in partnership with him, right? My job is to come and mourn with him and to minister to him and to lift him up. You see what I'm saying? But what happens is the person that's jealous says, oh, you was on the mountain last week. Now you're going through. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I completely understand where you're going, Pastor. However, but you can't understand why it's there. Yes. Because we are imperfect. And it's not your character. It never has been your character, right. even outside of Christ. Right. So you can't understand that now inside of Christ, but it's some people's character. Right. But everyone in the church is always saved. So when that causes the support amongst the body of Christ, then you can You was you was you was second. But 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 everybody in church is not saved, it's because they don't believe. And, 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 and a lot of people that are in church that think they're saved, think they believe, but they don't really in, 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 in the wee hours. They question Christ even existing. Yes. But do they always? Now, now, that's happened to me. Any thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you have to pull it down, cast down all imaginations. But if you take that thought and run away with it and allow it to be sown into your heart and wash the word away and you begin to hold on to the fact that your mind is saying Christ is not real, right. you, you are forfeiting right. your salvation. You can't lose it. 
You are sealed until the day of redemption. But at the moment that unbelief starts to sow and run like cancer, then you start, you begin, you begin the forfeiting process. It's called apostasy. It means the falling away. It talks about that in 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. The Antichrist can't come until there's a great falling away from the church, until people begin to say, Jesus wasn't real. Apostasy means you say, I'm going to be unconverted. Right. 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 Okay, who are you going to ask? I was going to say, like, in the church, I say, cry life off and keep us asking the questions that we need to ask to each other to get over those hurdles, no? Yeah, but right. probably like good or just the lack of... Um, um, boldness, shame, shame. People hide. People hide in their own shame, right? And, and, and what happens is that's why that's why I always give you my shortcomings. I always give you my faults. I always give you where I lack. So if I can give you where I lack, you can open up and say, okay, well he's not saying he's perfect. And if, and if, he, and if he's teaching me, then everybody in here ain't perfect. That's right. If everybody here is not perfect, then that means I can raise my hand and let's deal with my issue. So does the pride, pride come to play a part of that? Yeah, shame, pride. Because shame, well, it can be two things. Shame is, is guilt. Pride is, I want to be big. Because, because there's officers in church that do things that they're not supposed to be doing things. There's preachers who know. And when backsliding opens up, when, when they call the backslider, you never hardly ever see that officer in up there. And, and, and what happens, what happens though, if, if, if you can have enough knowledge of Christ and understand your relationship with Christ and deal with your backslidden position personally, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the front. Say that again. You can deal with your backslidden position on a personal level with you and Christ one on one. But I did say, that you never see the officer. You see people, you see people come to the altar and then they get elevated and they stop coming. I was one of them. That was me for a long time. Stop coming to the altar? For a long time. But you said something, you said you gonna stop. You said something you gonna No, I said I wasn't gonna do it this week. That's all. <laughs> no, that's all. That's all I said. I wasn't doing it that way. I wasn't calling no backslide. I said, deal with your issue. Deal with your issue. Some churches don't even really teach well, so people learn who they are in Christ. And then they don't know that they have the power. That okay. And I, and I understand Take care of that, and I can see that. That I can see. I, I completely understand. Yeah. So when but you don't know, then you will be walking under the completely. I do. You know what I mean? You don't know that you have that authority to be able to talk to us about And, and like, like I just said, it, it has never been in my nature to be like that. The actual so I, so the no, long term, it's not just God made as well. I don't see how it can be in your nature if you are a person of God to be like that. It is. In the church, I can understand the truth. But see, I, I was, I was who I am. I was who I am for forty some odd years before I came to church, and then found out that I even wanted to even see a different way, even just see a different way, not even think that I'm going to be different. Mm -hmm. I just see different. You know what I mean? I was who I was before that a lot longer than I am what I am now. So it, it, it wasn't like I'm going to, because any time I'm under this building, I'm going to be a different person. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to walk again. Okay, okay. So, so listen, Omar had a question about long suffering. It says faith and patience, faith and patience and long suffering. Faith and long suffering go together. Faith does not win, it's inherited without persevering endurance. Hence, long suffering is not only presented as an independent quality, but it's predicated of faith. So, what that's saying is, is that long suffering says that you endure your walk with Christ. It's an endurance. It's it's going through. Like I said, it's like it's like coming to the altar and everybody tells you that your life's going to be better, right? For me, this is this is what happened in my long suffering. 
I came to Christ and lost everything. The hot water was off, the heat was off, I had no food, the addiction notice. Y'all remember me saying that, right? And I had to get, that's in 2005 when I was right when we moved from that house into the apartment. I went to jail between that house and the apartment. You see what I'm saying? I, I came to Christ with two open, with two open drug charges, right? with two open cases. I had to endure. I had to go through my situation to get to this point in my life. Okay. 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 Endurance, perseverance. I have, I have a statement. Um, so, I think I already know what you're going to say, but what do you think about people that say that you're only where you are because, because you have to be? Let them talk. You know how many times you know, we only go to church because you, you went to jail? Oh, no, I know that, you, but you, I'm just saying. You only, like, you only went to church because you went to jail. But is, only, that not, is that not sort of true, though? Like, through our, through our hardships, we come closer to God, though. Right? This, is, this, is, this is how I made a decision to go to, go to, go to church. My wife was riding in the car. I called for my drug charge. We just ride to my life. We was going through a lot, right? Right. I looked at it and I said, let's go to church. I ain't tried everything else. Right. I wasn't running to church to get some help so right. the preacher could go to court. Come on now. I went because I was at a point where I understood that everything had just fell out from underneath my feet. Everything that I knew was was the way I the way the way life was had finally fallen out. It was my third, fourth time being arrested. I was 32, 33. I wasn't 20. I wasn't 25. I was becoming a man. I had these kids. I'm riding the car. It's quiet. And I'm just, I'm just thinking about my life. And I go. But, but, but then on the ride, about five minutes later, I said, let's get married. It wasn't that I was trying to hold on to her. It wasn't that I was trying to go to church and fool the preacher. I was literally ready for change. You see what I'm saying? I was ready for change. So when I came, I came full steam. I pulled out four notebooks that all said 2005. I wrote a sermon. I wrote a sermon in this notebook right here in 2005. Flew my mom when I read it. There was another notebook that I had and it said um, Isaiah 61. My future. And I drew this church and I named it. And I said, I believe and I receive and I accept. In 2005, and I had no, 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 no knowledge of, of the things that God was going to do. And as time went on, I didn't want to go, I didn't look at this. This is how I studied, and I studied the same way. I study the same way. So what I'm telling you is it was line by line, verse by verse, just like I teach. God was training me from the day I walked into the church. He began to train me for this moment. But you gotta, you gotta be able to persevere in life to get to where God wants you to go. You gotta be able to endure the hardships that come along with walking with Christ. You have to pick your cross up and you have to bear it. And whatever that cross is, you are the one who has to carry it. And when it gets heavy, you make the choice. Am I going to drop it and stop going through the long suffering and walk back out and hang out a little bit and tip back into church and be a little bit lukewarm and just deal with God and walk on, walk on the edge of the world and the kingdom and balance myself? Or am I going to dig deep down into the things of God and do exactly what God is telling me to do regardless if, it, regardless if I can't see him, if I can't taste him, if I can't hear him, if I can't feel him? Because I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. So I'm not going to tightrope. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to long suffer. I'm going to go through the things that God told me to go through, regardless if he has taken the training wheels off, regardless if I can't feel him no more, regardless of how far he lets me wander away, I'm going to stand right here, and I'm going to trust God to do exactly what he said he was going to do. Amen. That's what it's about. That's right.
That's what it's about. You you either gonna do it or you're not. That's right. You either gonna play with God or you're gonna play with the world. But you gotta make a choice. You gotta make a choice whether you're gonna walk in the kingdom or walk in the world. Because if you think that you're pleasing God by showing up to church once a month, you're not pleasing God. You're pleasing your own mindset. You're not even pleasing your spirit. That's right. You can't play with the things of the flesh and think that God doesn't see it. He said that the, that the darkness is like light to him. And if it's like light to him, then you must know that if we don't see it, and we and you come in here acting pious and religious and thinking that nobody knows your issue, God knows your issue, and the very thing you think that you hide from the church will, excuse me, will pop up its ugly head. It grows fruit too. Right. Yeah. Well, y'all don't let me do some hoping up here. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just want to say something. So, because me and Joe were talking about this earlier. <laughs> we had a long conversation. But, That's like, good. so God kind of, like, does deal with you before you accept him in your life, right? Yeah. He's kind of, yeah. like you said, he, he plants that seed for you to come to the altar and dedicate your life, right? He comes up with this prayer. Begin in this time. Prayer. Right. Hold on. Answer me again. I said, because I, I, I feel like this is this is my revelation that he was dealing with me even before I accepted him in my life. Like, he does deal with you outside of... He sent me an email five, six months ago. Yo, I'm in a dark place, yo. I'm mad and I'm ministering to you. I'm ministering to you. I was. <laughs> but, but you know what? Right. He was dealing with you. Right. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have contacted me. You hit me. You hit me, you hit me, because he told you. That's right. Woo! You see what I'm saying? Oh, really? I, 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 yeah. And I, and I, and I, and I seized the opportunity. Right. To, 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 to put something in your mind Amen. against all that evil that you meant. Right. You see what I'm saying? And look where you popped up. You right. popped up in your nose. <laughs> 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 you popped up being nosy right. and got stuck on the things of God. Hey, what's up? What, what the scripture yeah. spoke on is that I knew you in the womb. Right. And it's just like, it's like, it's, your whole life has already been planned out. It's been already planned, but you just got to go through the most, go through the motions and stuff. No, you know? it's no? not planned. Because, well, because because we have a will. Because we have we have free will, and he knows who's going to choose and who's not going to choose. Right. And he knows who's going to fall and who's not going to fall. Right. So what he does is he lays blessings and curses out before you. Right. He lays goodness and evil out before you. Mm. He lays all this stuff out before you, and then he tells you, here, choose this. That's right. Choose this. And you look at it, and you say, man, that looks really good. But hold on, God. And what happens, you continue right. to sow into your flesh and keep reaping corruption. Right. I, had a, I had a conversation with somebody, and they said, well, if God called me, he was going to know that at this point in my life, I was going to do this. Uh, and I said to him, but he didn't call you while you were doing this. Mm -hmm. He called you when you wasn't doing that. And, and you have to fight who you become. I have the opportunity now, with the knowledge I have of Christ, to never go to church again. I know that church is not what saved me. My Redeemer who lives has saved me. I know that. I, I have the opportunity to never teach his word again. I have the opportunity now, if I want, with the knowledge I have of Christ, to go sit down and have a beer maybe once, once every once in a while on the weekends. I have the opportunity now, with the knowledge I have, to do some things that I've missed in the world because it's not my actions that saved me it's the blood of Jesus and the grace of God that has saved me but because I love him so much and because he dwells with inside of me I curb my own things that I want to do and I chase after the things of God because if I stop chasing him and just accept salvation life begins to get hard but if I keep sowing into the kingdom and sowing into the things of God, it gets easier. That's right. He's with me. He will not forsake me. He will not leave me. 
I'm his, I'm his child. So, so therefore, I cannot be a child of the world. I must be a child of the kingdom. I'm a kingdom kid, Doc. Right. <laughs> That's who I am. So, so, so we had the opportunity to fall. Even though he says he known us in the womb, we had the opportunity to fall. You got to make a choice whether you're going to fall or whether you're going to continue to walk with God. Choices. Five smooth stones. Five smooth stones. Five smooth stones. Romans chapter 8. Save way. I'm going to jump on y'all. Because y'all don't want to talk about hell. We got to get through hope so we can talk about hell. Where dead people go. Joe wants to talk about heaven. We're going to talk about heaven too. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to do two of them in one. We're going to talk about hope and redemption of all creation and hope and adoption that has that been consummated. Romans 8 18. Consummation, adoption consummated. When you, when you consummate a marriage, you know, it's intimate. Thank you. <laughs> Using the right word. <laughs> Adoption consummated, that's the second one. The first one is redemption of all creation. Verse 18. It says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed, be revealed in us. Right? So the suffering is... Um, everything that comes up to 18. He, he talks about um, but if you live after the flesh you shall die but if through the spirit you mortify the deeds of the body you shall live for as many as are led by the spirit of God you are the sons of God for you have not received the spirit of bodies again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and the children that they are heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ and so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Verse 18, it says, For I reckon that the suffering of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Worthy, weighty, or comparable. They're not as heavy. The things that we go through are not as heavy as the things that we have waiting on us. Life seems heavy because we're in it. But the hope that we have the hope of the future that we have, it, it doesn't matter, right? It says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing by reason of him, who have subject the same in hope. And you don't know how many times I have studied that scripture. It's wow to lay hold of that. So, so look at 19. It said, for the earnest expectation of the creature Wait for the manifestations of the Son of God. That word creature is really creation. Creation. Mm -hmm. Everything, everything that's in creation is waiting for us to grow up and realize who we are in this world. It's waiting for the manifestation of the Son of God. Because in Genesis, God cursed the ground. And if he cursed the ground, everything that comes from the ground, everything that walks on the ground is cursed. But at the moment that Christ has come into the believer's life, the curse goes away and the blessing governs their life. So now, if you understand who you are, that's when the manifestation of the power of God wrestles inside of you and creation. How many times have you heard me say that every time you take a step, the ground sighs yes. and believes? Because you knowing that you are a child of God, you knowing that the blessing of Christ and the blessing of Abraham rest on inside of you, you knowing that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you know that you are a child of the living God, that El Elyon, the Most High God, is your father. When you understand, fully understand your walk with Christ, creation sighs with relief. Right? So look at this. Look at 20. It says, for the creature was made subject to vanity. It was made subject to haughtiness, haughtiness and pride and arrogance, right? It said, not willing by, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. Not by reason, 
not by reason, but he placed hope. He placed hope there, right? Look, let me let me let me break this down for you. Turn, let me let me don't turn. I got it right here. Let me break it down a little bit better for you. Can I read mine twenty? Go ahead. It says, for creation was condemned to, to lose its purpose, not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Amen. Amen. That's probably what this is going to say. <laughs> this could be translated, then, as use several symbols of love because of him who subjected in the hope. Because of human rebellion, as an attempt to turn mankind to himself, the purpose purposeful futility only will only be for a period of time. Redeemed humanity has a promise of physical future. God foreknew, foreknew Adam's rebellion. He allowed it to occur, occur and chose to walk with the fallen mankind in the fallen world. This is not the world that God intended to be. This is not the world it will one day be. Read George again. For creation was condemned to lose its purpose. Not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Vanity. Mine says vanity. Emptiness. Right? Thank you uh, amplify. Go ahead. For the creation of nature was subjected, excuse me, was subjected to frailty, to fertility, condemned to frustration. Utility means empty. Right? It means empty. Read yours again, Desiree. For creation was condemned to lose its purpose, not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. So, 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 so listen to this. So listen to this. So listen to this. It said that God willed it to be so. So, so that's saying that we became empty. Wow. Wow. Our endemic nature. Huh? Our endemic nature. Which one? Which <laughs> one? <laughs>
because today no we can the drop the floor and turn the drop the hand before you. Hold on, hold on, Stefan. Because today is that between tropical Capricorn and Capricorn and the tropical cancer and the head. No, no question, but it's around the same part of the earth. So even if it kills on this winter, the solar, uh, solar system. But the calendar was different. I understand, but you said it was based on. The weather changed. The temperature changed. It wasn't that big. Okay, but it changed. So you, you gotta understand. You gotta understand that that that. What's the, what's the ones who came from the east that um, came to see Jesus when he was born? They, they were astronomers. Right. They, 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 the, those, those astronomers then, yeah. those people who watched the stars and yeah. moons and, and they worshiped the moon and they worshiped stars. And, yeah. so, so, so they understood the changing of, 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 of time. Right. You see what I'm saying? But the calendar, the way they counted days, was, was was by the sun, not by a 24-hour clock, but by the sun, right? The ninth hour, you, you read that in the Bible, right? Where the ninth hour might, might have been 6 o'clock in the morning. You see what I mean? Right, they follow the star. See, you always pull the hard questions out. It makes me dig deep. Come on, y'all. <laughs> and, and excuse me, if somebody else can talk and ask a question, just wait, please. Please. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bonds of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but also ourselves, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption of the writ, the redemption of our body. Okay, verse 23. It says, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. When there's a first fruit harvest, when they used to take the first fruits, and they would take it to the temple and give it to the priesthood, it was evidence that there was more. First fruits mean it's evidence that it's more. So what it's saying, it says, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves were grown within ourselves. So us having the first fruits of the Spirit, it's, it's evidence that there's more. Right. It's evidence that there's more people that have to come into the kingdom. But even we groan within ourselves. Why? Why do we groan within ourselves? Waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our bodies. So, so, so we see saved people who get cancer, who get problems in their body. It's because we're waiting on the redemption of our body. The spirit has been redeemed and made new. The flesh has been redeemed and not made new. You see what I'm saying? Christ paid the price for us. Our spirit man has claimed all redemption. We have been quickened through our spirit. Our flesh is still decaying. Our flesh and our bodies are still going through. Yes. So it doesn't matter if you get buried or creepy. Oh. This old thing, man? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit is First, First Corinthians 15 says you got to shed the mortal to get the immortal. You got to shed this. You gotta so shed this thing. So all of the funeral stuff is just. Um, Jesus, Je yeah, Jesus said, he said, well, let me, hold on, Jesus. I gotta go over and bury such and such. Jesus said, hold on. Let the dead bury the dead. You gonna go with me or what? That's right. You coming? You already gone. That's right. It says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. But what a man see if why do we yet hope for? Mm -hmm. So we are saved by hope. Mm -hmm. And we're waiting for the redemption of our bodies. Yes. So are you saved? Yes. No. Yes. Who is not saved? Who is not saved? No, you're not. Spirit. Are you saved? Souls. Are you saved? Yes. Why? Because I believe it in my heart. You believe it in your heart and you confess it with your mouth. So you walking around heaven with this glorified body, you don't have the ability to do what Christ says. 
But hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a question. Hold on. So you don't have the ability, you have, you, you're saying you have the ability not to do any unrighteousness, that you have found perfection. Because the redemption of your body, the redemption of your body means the glorification process. And that's when you get to heaven and he gives you a new body. So we are saved by hope. And that's our faith. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Um, so, so, so yes, we claim salvation because it's our faith. Right? It's our faith. But it has not happened yet. It's our hope. None of us have seen Jesus. None of us have seen the Holy Spirit. None of us have seen God. No one has seen the pearly gates. And you have the audacity to think that you're going into the dirt and that you're going to be called out of the dirt with some trumpet and, this, and this, this man that's walking around heaven is going to get on the cloud and come riding back on the cloud and then all, and then all the people who are living will see all these dead people coming out of the ground and then and at the same time this is some man that went to hell and came back. And y'all believe that. That's our hope. That's our hope. Romans 8, 20, 30, 30. What did you say, Jamal? You said you'd rather be wrong. Yeah. Than, yeah. 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 Like 29. Uh, I'd rather be wrong in a fool and trust in Jesus and have this hope than to run around the world and find out that hell is real and heaven's real too. So I rest in Jesus. I rest with that hope. I take on and be the fool for Christ. I'd be all that. Good praise. So, so, so look at 29. Look at 29. It said, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. How many, how many of you are now being conformed to what this Bible was telling you to do in your life? That's, that's the first fruits of the Spirit, okay? Now, it says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, past tense, right? right. Then it says, Whom he called, them he also justified, past tense, right? right. And then he, and, and, and whom he justified, them he also glorified, Amen. past tense. But glorification happens in heaven. So what I'm telling you is, is that he sees you as if you're already glorified. So because this is our hope, we got to believe this stuff. That even though I have aches and pains, even though I may do things that God tells me not to do, he still looks at me because he has justified. First he called me, then he justified me, and then he glorified me. So he sees me in my glory in, in the final stages of who I am. Mm -hmm. yes. He sees me already glorified. Yes. He's already placed me in a predestinated place. Yes. He called me, he justified me, and he already glorified me. Yes. I already have my little bedroom in my mansion in heaven. Yes. Chilling. Yes. Well, walk around heaven all day. Acts 227. Acts 227. We are done with hope. Don't even like hope. Peter, now remember. Remember this. Remember this when you, when you see this. Peter, Peter is, let, let, me, let me lay some groundwork for Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, everybody's together, Holy Spirit comes, he drops, they begin to speak in tongues. Some other people are standing around, they say, wait a minute, these people are speaking a language, right? They must be drunk. Peter stands up, he said, these people are drunk. 
It's not even the hour before we even have breakfast. They drink with breakfast. We we in the, we in the temple at this time. So 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 because we're in the temple at this time, know this. That this is what Christ has manifested. This is what Christ has promised. The pouring out of the Spirit. And now he begins to preach. So what we've been going through is his sermon. The first sermon of the church. This is the day that the church was born. Right? So he thought, then he begins to talk about David's prophecy. So Acts 27 says, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. David, David was saying, David was saying, man, it, it, it's like a twofold thing. David, David was saying, I'm dying, and I'm going to die, and I'm going to go to hell. But he was really prophesying about Christ. He was really prophesying about Christ. Hell is translated Hades in the New Old Testament. It is the Greek term for the holding place of the dead, the dark realm of the dead. Turn to Job 10. We're going to start talking about where the dead go. Where the dead go. What time is it? A couple minutes. Job, what did I say, 10? Job 10. The first poetic book, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, they're all poetical books. Ten, verse 19. See, and what I want you to be mindful of Job was, Job was going through. Job spoke a whole lot of negativity. Job bounced back and forth between trust and not trusting, between faith and unbelief. He did. So when you read Job, have that in mind from here on out. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And that was Job going through saying that. Okay? All right. I'm going to give y'all another one real quick. The next time you hear a preacher say, the kingdom suffered violence, and the violent taken by force. What happens then? The church says, yeah, amen. Right? Oh. What he's saying is, when it says the kingdom suffered violence, and the violent taken by force, what he's really saying is, is those who are outside the kingdom are trying to come another way, and they're trying to forcefully push their way into the kingdom. But they use it on the flip side. They say the kingdom suffered violence, and the violent taken by force. Go get your stuff back. Go get back the things the devil stole from you. They teaching it wrong. Right. Amen. Mm. Wow. And I would have never known if I would not have went and studied and learned and had somebody teach me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Stuff gets handed down. Wow. Stuff gets handed down, man. Teach. Stuff gets handed down. <laughs> That's what I call you teach. <laughs> Verse 19. It said, I should have been as though I had not been. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Cease then and let me alone that I may take comfort a little. Before I go, which I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness as dark as itself and of the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. So Job's talking about hell. So Job describes hell as a land of darkness, as darkness itself, and as a shadow of death, without any order, and where the light is as darkness. A place, turn to Job 26. Said, dead things are formed from under the waters and in the heavens thereof. 
hell is naked before him, and destruction has no cover. So it's saying hell is under the water. Turn to Job 7. Why is Job just all over hell? Job what? 7. Verse 9. Somebody read verse 9. Yeah. Like a cloud that fades and is gone, we humans die and never return. We are forgotten by all who knew us. That's 9 and 7 together. Mine says, as a cloud is consumed and vanished away, so that he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. So it's a place that is dark. It's a place, there is my man. A place that is dark. A place that it has uh, no light. A place that has no order. A place that you cannot return from. Right? This is a place that is, is destined for the non-believer. The non-believer. The person who has died outside of Jesus Christ. Ask the question. <laughs> uh, I was talking to my aunt the other day, and you know what we were talking about? Uh -huh. And we were discussing Abraham's okay, book. Oh, so, so you found out? Well, kind of sort of. I want you to. So, in the Old Testament, all humans go to Sheol. This refers to death or the grave. Shadowy consciousness, but a joyless existence. Job 10 again. I can't give it to you. I can't give you Abraham's bosom here, cuz. <laughs> okay. Job 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and in iron. Because thou rebelled against the words of God and con contempted, despised, that's what that word is translated. Despised, despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sun. So it's a place, it's a place where you have consciousness, but there's no joy. There's no joy there, right? I'm just gonna lay some groundwork because we don't have a lot of time and I'm not digging into this. You smile. Shio, characterized, associated with God's judgment, associated with punishment even before judgment day associated with destruction, but also open to God, associated with the pit, which is the grave, wickedness descended alive into Sheol, personified as an animal with a large mouth. Turn to Deuteronomy 
32, associated with God's judgment. Huh? Sheo. Sheo. S-E-H-E-O. Deuteronomy what? 32. So it says that hell is associated with God's judgment. Verse 32. It says, For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and their cruel venom of ass. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belong vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due, ooh, God, it says slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the thing shall come upon them and make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. Mm -hmm. So it says, for their vine is the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. What happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? Mm -hmm. Destroyed. Why? Why? Sin. Why? Sin. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. No restraints. No, no, no restraints. Turn, turn to First Corinthians six real quick. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you said 
the Bible says we are. Right. Okay. Hold on. So, hold on. 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 Hold What's repentance mean? To turn, turn, away. Away. turn away. To turn away. Turn away. To turn away. Right? Now, God, God's merciful. He has forbearance. He holds off wrath. But if there, but but I believe if there is no fight in you, if you come and you stand on one side with the kingdom. And then you go home and do the same thing every single day, day in, day out. You're lukewarm. You're lukewarm. And then that's when James comes in and says, faith without works is dead faith. It's dead faith. The Holy Spirit's been dealing with you about your issue. You claiming Christ. You claim him the champion, but you can't you can't tap into his power and fight the good fight of faith. And deal with the sanctification process. Now I ain't talking about one year, I ain't talking about two years. I'm talking about when you come to a full knowledge of Christ. I'm not talking about the baby. I'm talking about the person who has a full knowledge of Christ. They have the faith. But repentance hasn't come. And I don't care any theology, any theology book that I've studied said faith has not dropped on a person's life unless there's faith and repentance. And repentance is not saying, oh God, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Repentance is for turning from that thing. Because what would it look like if I was going home sniffing coke every night? Come on now. I'm, I have all this knowledge of the word. I have this form of godliness. But I never come to the deliverance power in the word. I never come to the washing and the sanctification. Look what, look what it said in verse, in verse uh, 11. It says, know ye not that your bodies, wrong verse, 11, and such were some of you, and such were some of you. Some of you used to do these things, but ye are washed, and ye are sanctified, and you are justified in the name of Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. You have been washed, you have been justified, and you have been sanctified. Sanctified, they will tell you sanctification is only being set apart. And that is a part of it. But there's a process in being set apart. And that is the pruning. That is the fight. That is the battle with the spirit and the flesh. So I must ask you, if there is no repentance, and there's only faith, it's dead. It's dead. Has salvation been received? Now there's no work. It has to be both. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to hand first. Hebrews. Hebrews 5. Uh, 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 13 and 11. For everyone, let's get, hold on, let's get there. Hebrews 5, 13 and 14. Hebrews 5, 14. 13 and 14. Okay. Let's see if you read both of them. Okay. Okay. They're talking about that. Oh. that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe. Mm. 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Mm. So if you can discern both good and evil then I would have to agree with you. Okay, can we go a little further? <laughs> verse 6, chapter 6, next, next verse. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, the foundation, 
therefore leaving the foundations of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works of faith toward God. Right? Look at this. Of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on the hands, and the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put to an open shame. Constantly put Christ to shame. My God. Constantly throwing him back on the, on the cross. Jesus. Claiming Christ, walking in Christ, speaking in tongues, laying on of hands, rejoicing in baptisms, and can't even curb their own flesh. Where do the dead go? Where do the unrighteous go? Some being in church unsaved. It's all the things that popped up tonight. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Stefan said, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. There's, there's, there's a time period. Uh -huh. There's a time period that God wakes and, right. he, and he excuses, mm -hmm. right? He says, But strong meat belongs to them that are full age. Come on now. It belongs to them that are full age, right? <laughs> Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised, have their senses, have their flesh, mm -hmm. have their senses exercised mm -hmm. to discern both good and evil. Evil is, is not always witnessed through spiritual things. They can touch, oh God, mm -hmm. touching the things that God said not to touch. Mm -hmm. Touching the things that God said not to touch. He says, I've given you the power to be delivered from that thing. You keep touching it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you go back to see what we see was therefore leaving the discussion decision of the elementary elementary principle of Christ. What he's saying is, can we move on, please? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Great. That's can right. we move on? Right. Why well, we gotta keep talking about this elementary stuff? Right. Can you can you study on your own? Yeah. Can you move yeah. past your own flesh? Can we get to some heavy stuff? Mm. Paul, and see what you have to understand is that oh this ain't, I'm, I thought always a correct this is Hebrew we don't know who wrote Hebrews mm -hmm. that's right but whoever wrote Hebrews would say listen yeah <laughs> it so sounds like Paul though yeah, yeah. I want to give it to him but they just don't Most know who wrote do. it Most people do. <laughs> leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Why? When are you gonna stop backsliding? Come on now. Amen. When are you gonna? When are you gonna fight the good fight of faith? <laughs> where, 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 where are you going when you die? Where are you going? How long you been walking with God doing the same thing right. you did before you walked into the kingdom? Mm -hmm. See, see, see. When I started out in November teaching the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. I knew who I was teaching. I knew those, I've been called to those who have been afar off. I was afar off. I didn't grow up on the first pew. I didn't do that. I knew who I was going to be preaching to. So I have to give you what the righteousness of God means. Grace, justified by faith alone. But there comes a time where I have to give it to you fully. Wake up. Wake up. No longer a baby, right? And you walk outside of the of the your 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 walk. Do you or or it's been a long time since you've been, you know, since you claim Christ? You slip. Yeah. Or it's been a long time. Do you have what is the term reclaim your salvation? Like oh, that's, a lot. that's a lot. That's a lot. Like rededicate yourself. That's whatever. different. What is that? That's okay. just that's just something in to say. I'm gonna dedicate myself to the kingdom. Because because you was walking in the kingdom and you chose and you chose to walk in your flesh. You was dealing with God through spiritual things. Come on, stay with me. You ask me questions now. Stay with me. You you walking you 
you're walking with God through spiritual things, and then you choose to go back into the world. Mm -hmm. okay. You choose to do the things of the flesh. Right. So how do you rededicate yourself? You go back, or is that you, your own? See, I never, I, I never had to do it. <laughs> I never had to do it. I, I came and I stayed. Right. I came and God dealt with me, and I stayed. I cried. I, I worshipped. I, I remember every night one summer, I would go out and lay on the balcony, man, and just lay there and cry. Mm -hmm. Me and CeCe Wines, boy, oh, in the man. throne room. Mm -hmm. I put my little rug out, you yes. know, because I thought I needed that, right? I thought I needed a prayer rug, so I threw my little rug out. I remember shaking all on it, right? And then I would lay on it, and I would lay there and cry, and I would worship, and I would worship, and I'd wake up, and there'd be bats flying everywhere, and I'd mm -hmm. fall back to sleep, I'd wake up, and there'd be birds on the line chirping. That's right. Summertime, yes, I was sir. out there, there, worshiping, dealing with myself, because I wanted to go get high, I wanted to go hustle, I wanted to run around and do the things that I used to do, I was missing the night, I was missing the bar, I was missing the money, I was missing the life. And I had to learn and sit still yes. and be patient and wait on God. So, 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 so he fortified me to the point where, but I, but I put the work in. You see what I'm saying? He gave, he gave me the power. And when, I, when, when, when the Holy Spirit comes, you feel it. You feel it. And when, and when you start doing things wrong, if the conviction's yes, not sir. there, you must question your salvation. That's right. That's right. That's right. If, if, I'm, if I'm sitting in a bar tomorrow night with my homeboys, and I'm, uh -huh. and girls is walking by, and I'm, yeah. and I'm doing all that. That's right. So rededication is more just just for Kenton. But, 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 but not in my walk now. Because, because that would just be a fault. But if I continued that way from the very beginning, let me, let me rephrase that. And there was no repentance. I'd only came to intellectual faith and emotional faith. He moved me a little bit. He moved me to pray. But, but it's the volitional. It's the voluntary faith. Volitional faith means voluntary faith. The voluntarily subjecting myself to the things of God. Voluntarily staying in the kingdom. Voluntarily taking my hands and tying myself to Christ and becoming his slave. Becoming his prisoner. Because, because he gives me the key to unlock myself. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This thing's not heavy. You can take it off whenever you want. You can walk away from me if you choose. It's better to stay here with me. It's better to stay here with me. Because what happens is people come into church and they lock themselves. And then when the door, and then after the doors of the church close, they unlock themselves and they go on about their business. And they've done it ever since day one because they refuse to give up their pleasures. They refuse to give up fleshly pleasures. They refuse to allow Christ to mold and shape yes. their lives. Yes. So they have this yes. form of godliness. They have this form of godliness. And whenever the flesh pops its ugly head up, they all in. Yeah. All in. All in. Lascivious. No restraints. And call themselves saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. With no fire baptized, with no convictions, operating in gifts, singing their head off, singing, singing, operating in the gift of ministry. George Bloomer, George Bloomer said he would he would sit in his house, in his room, in his, in his office, smoke a piece of crack, and come out on fire preaching. They don't do it no more. Right. But that's where he was. Right. Wow. On with a TV ministry. Wow. Mm. Mm. So, so I gotta ask you. I gotta ask you. <laughs> are you dealing with your issues? Mm -hmm. Are you dealing with your flesh? Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's okay to fall. It's okay to trip. It's okay to slip. Mm -hmm. But 
are you blatantly being disobedient to what God has called you to? So you must ask yourself, where am I going to go when I die? Faith without works is dead. 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 Where do the dead go? No rule. Dark. No rule. It said, it said the darkness is like light. That means that if I turn the lights off, it's the norm. It's just the norm. It's just a dark place. Oh, I hope so, y'all. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Because I also want you to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. I want you. I preach an in your face message probably every time I get up here. Mm -hmm. Because it's important. Yes, sir. I was going to say, man, that's why I, when I'm doing praise and worship, just to interject this, I, I, my testimony is I run through these doors. Yes. And my praise is in such a high place yeah. because there's power. Mm -hmm. There's power in praise and worship. Mm -hmm. The act of the, sub, of the subduction of the flesh in my praise and worship, mm -hmm. the act of getting in tune with God, it works for me after fighting those battles day in mm -hmm. and day out. Paul yeah. says to be pressed towards the mark. Yeah. That's the press. That's mm -hmm. why I come in here sometimes and it looks like mm -hmm. I'm absolutely losing my mind and my testimony is in that place because... I have, I, we fight those fights, and I'm not going to run from them. I'm not going to hide from them. And there is a place of maturity. Pastor's in that place where he's in his word, and he's just walking in that. But some of us, you know, we'd rather hold it in. Pretend like there's nothing going on bad in our lives. And the whole time God's saying, give it to me. That's right. Give it to me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give it to me. Just give it to me. Come unto me, my brother, and Jesus. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4. Last, last scripture, I'm going to let y'all go. This thing got good to me. <laughs> got good to me. Ephesians 4. Verse 11. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is why he's given me <coughs> to you. Mm -hmm. right? He's given me to you that you come and that you would learn of Christ and that you, till we all come in the unity of faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He told me to come serve you mm -hmm. and be your servant so that you would grow up and be in the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every doctrine by the slight of men, the cunning of craftiness, whereby they lay in wait to the sea. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to effectual working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. So it's saying to, to make the body grow, right? It says, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Look, we are to be different. We're in the kingdom of God. We have translated. We have become new creatures. Behold your new life. Take hold of it, right? It says, having to understand darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. We go, you can, you can have fellowship with the world, but do not walk the way the world walks. Come on, Amber. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I'm not telling you to isolate yourself. Right. I'm telling you to be different. To be the salt, to be the light. Don't lose your Savior. Don't come to church and be praising God and then going back and then walking the same way the people who refuse to come to church walk. Amen. Right? Amen. Who being past feeling having given themselves unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. You didn't learn these things from Jesus.
Jesus. Jesus didn't teach you to continue walking the way you walk. That's right. He didn't teach you those things. Christ has taught you something completely different. How can you go and walk that way? How is there no fight in you? How? How can you taste Jesus and his spirit and his kingdom and his goodness and his mercy and his grace and take full advantage of it and go do something that is so different from what the word of God teaches? He understands the baby. It's the vets. Come on, that make you mad. Mm-hmm. It's the vets who've been walking for a long time. It's the vets who be sitting in church, serving, mm-hmm. and not fighting. Nice. Gotta be a fight. There gotta be a oh. There gotta be a yeah. oh. Yeah. It's gotta be that in. It has to be that in you. It has to be. Go ahead and read, go ahead and read 20, 20, 20, keep going on down to, to 24. It's so that be that you have heard of him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man which is corrupt to the deceitful lust. Come on now. He said, he said, and if you've been taught by him, if you heard of him, and if the truth is in Jesus, check it off. See, the devil. No, you. That's right. Come on now. Not the devil, you. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We're putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let the sun not go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let, because see, because see, that's what happens. We give place to the devil. How can you be blessed and cursed at the same time? How can you walk with God and walk with the world at the same time? All that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. How can you walk with God and walk with the world at the same time? At the same time, you've been walking with God and have never curbed and have never truly curbed. You may go six months and not walk in that thing that you used to walk in, but the next six months to two years, you walk in that thing and then you fight a little bit for two months and you think you're doing something and you walk back over and you're going for another two years. That's not repentance. That's a small fight. Repentance is turning from that thing. And not returning to it. Mm. Taking the Air Force Ones and throwing them up on the on the <laughs> telephone. <laughs> <board. laughs> Taking my New York fitted and throwing it in the river somewhere. I moved to another state. Moved to another state. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. That's right. Amen. Fight your flesh. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Having piety. 
Stop doing that. Come in here with the big shaking incense. All that. All that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me a drink. Ah, come on in.
that if I commit adultery, that if I steal money, or if I commit a felony, that you guys got to get a new pastor. I made sure that was in my bylaws. So, so if I do that, I can't do what God has created me to do. You have to find somebody else. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't follow me if I did those things. I'm just saying, you better not do those things. I mean, I thought that was why our church became one because the leadership and, and appointed people in the church that some were not everybody. Are not like everybody. You know what I'm everybody, though. Wolves and yeah. sheep. Mm. The, 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 but there's wolves and all sheep in the pew. I'm telling you, man. I've seen people walk in church. They come in, they keep the door open. Boom! Uh -huh. Praise the Lord! <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Right. I have like, oh. Right? Right. And then and then and then in the next and, and then in the next breath, they backbiting somebody. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Falling out, crying, right. and then they.
Thank you for new life world ministry. 